Now you would think, with my German background, they would put me into intelligence or... You go, to, you go to Sioux Falls, South Dakota, to the radio school. You learn to be a radio operator for the Army Air Corps. That's what happened. I went to Sioux Falls, I went through the, the whole training, wound up in the top 5% of the class, but they wouldn't let me go to radar school because I didn't have the security clearance because I wasn't a citizen. Then, then I uh, was interviewed by the intelligence officer. They made me an American citizen, and then we went to Camp Ritchie, Maryland. Camp Ritchie had two sections, Japanese and German. We were in the German section. Uh, they wore German army uniforms. Everything was spoken in German. We had to learn everything about uh, you know, German army organization and the ranks and the weapons. And I mean, it was a uh, very, very intense, very difficult uh, training. Uh, terrain intelligence, uh, I mean, it, it was very, very thorough. And uh, they um, said, from here you will go overseas and some of you uh, may have to have special training to be dropped behind the lines, uh, but you have to volunteer. But, you know, in those days, the Army said, we need three volunteers, you, you, and <laughs> you. The camp was com completely enclosed in uh, high-tension wire, and somebody had, had cut that power off, but we found, like, half a dozen guys hanging in there they had committed suicide by jumping onto the, onto the live wire. And I'll tell you, this may sound bad, but they were the lucky ones. The gas chamber was in an area towards the back of the camp. The building was labeled in German, disinfection station. And then the gas chamber itself was labeled Brausebad. Uh, um, shower. They had a big sign on their shower. So what they would do is make those people go into that first building, take off all their clothes. They said, you're going to be disinfected there. And then march them naked into the building that had, had the gas outlets at the top, lock the doors, dump that cyclone in there. And then we came to a barracks. And you've seen pictures of the barracks where they lived in little cubby holes. This barracks had like two by fours nailed across the door so they couldn't, whoever was in there couldn't get out. And it said in German, danger, typhus. They let the people die. The people that got the typhus, typhoid fever, they just nailed them up and let them die. So by that time, we had seen enough, and I'll tell you something. I saw American soldiers just collapsing, crying, throwing up. I mean, you know, really, nobody knew. What do you do? How do you help these people? So our officer, the senior officer, said, let's get in these buildings and get a hold of the, all the documents and records. Because we found out one of the things that happened in Dachau, they did these medical experiments on the prisoners. There was, and I have a, a list here of the names, which I will give you in a minute. One of the first ones <coughs> was they did experiments on malaria, on how to treat malaria. So they intentionally infected hundreds and hundreds of prisoners with malaria and then tried different treatments, most of which didn't work. I spoke to a prisoner who was in pretty good shape, but wore the prison outfit. He was a doctor. He was from Czechoslovakia. The Nazis had him do autopsies of all the people that died. He, he was forced to do that. I forgot what he told me, how many thousand autopsies he had to do. People that died from 
the malaria experiments. Then they did experiments on people on how they for the for the Luftwaffe how they would s survive in freezing water. They threw them into a container that had ice cube ice blocks floating in there and took their temperature every two minutes and the people were screaming and hollering and freezing to death and then they put some of these uniforms on that they were testing and some of them protected them a little against that but most of them didn't and there were hundreds and hundreds of those people that just didn't didn't survive and if they were halfway alive later they, they killed them then they did another set of experiments on explosive decompression. That was for the Luftwaffe also. Because we found all those records later, that's how we knew, but we also heard from some of the prisoners. They would put them into a, um, uh, a compression chamber uh, and gradually increase the, the pressure like they would have in, in those planes. Um, and then they would very suddenly dropped the pressure to, to simulate, you know, explosive decompression, but most of those people died, if not instantly, but miserably, you know, their blood was boiling, and uh, it was so horrible.